Cardinal Coffee. Still here. We're back on site, finally. It's been about three weeks since we've been here because we've had no windows, and there's a certain order of things that if you do it in this order, it's easier, like windows, then siding, then roof, because we don't want to do the roof before the siding, because then we're standing on the shingles, installing the siding, they get all marred up. So we're trying to follow that order, but it's just not gonna work out because we can't get our windows. So we're getting our siding sent out and we're gonna get going on that today. We're gonna side everything, then cut the window trims in later. If you didn't catch it, the window plant um, got hit by a tornado that we ordered our windows from and they can't even get in there right now to know if our windows got destroyed or not. It's a Monday morning and I'm excited to be at work after being gone for three weeks, although, I don't know if I really have time to come to work. Anymore. I know. I was so busy just doing stuff. I've like, been doing I don't have time to work. I've been doing honeydew stuff for three weeks straight, and and you're not done. No. <laughs> Wait. It, forget honeydew. Okay. We got totally. some new tools with us. All Let's right. Check those out. It's Monday, and I'm excited because we have some new tools. The first tool we have is a Dewalt job site table saw. Is it this, Dewalt or Dewalt though? D. Walt. Okay. D E C capital W. I don't know. That's how you say it. D Walt. Either way. And this is a model number 7491RS. They got highly recommended by Johnny Brook. And thank you to DeWalt for sending us this. Jamie ruined our last one. Yes, We're thank set you it up. very much. It seems like it's always my fault. Let's check out some of the cool features this saw has that I've never seen before on a table saw. Waterproof? Yeah, of course it's waterproof. <laughs> I think it says on the box. Just kidding, we ruined the goes last Goes down one. to like 30 meters <laughs> deep. All right, let's check it out. All right, so this fence is kind of cool. It actually can be located in different positions on this runner here. So when you move the little adjuster, you know, it moves the fence. Now, if you want to rip a really wide board, uh, this is a really cool thing here. You would, you would actually take this off and put it on the farthest away set of, uh, I don't know what to call these little nubs here. And then you can slide it way out. Wow. But then you're like, oh no, my stuff's gonna fall. Right? Right, wrong. This has a little flip down Ledge. mechanism. It's gonna support your material That's there. That's cool. And then you lock, uh, you lock it in place there. So now it's not gonna move. That is pretty sweet. Second thing we've got that's new here is a new cop gun by Silly Gun. And Ooh. we've never, silly gun. Silly gun. We've never tried these before, but there it is. Uh, how do I get that out of here? Man, that's silly. Uh, there's no frame and there's no part sticking out here. So when you squeeze the trigger, it cuts the tube. Can you see that? I see it. Oh, and it's so it's compact and, and no drip. So we're gonna test these out because that is, that's crazy. It is crazy. And I've never seen anything like it, but it is very compact. And it seems like it's working. All I like the name, silly gun. Silly gun. You, hey. What do you think of this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like something from Star Trek. <laughs> it's Star Trek. So you know how much we hate doing house wrap, right? Oh, you love it. Yeah, so <laughs> we are on three, three times house wrap in the front of this thing. It's Freaking a, wind this is, is wind. ridiculous. Yeah, so it, this time we're gonna go I'm telling you right now, the next cover. house we build, we gotta say so on where it's at. Because <laughs> okay. these lots you pick suck. <laughs> Now, besides there just being crazy wind up here, the main reason this stuff keeps blowing off is that we're putting it over the window openings and there are large openings to try and keep wind blown rain out of the house because there are heat and air ducts in here. So that's the main problem at this point. Nice work. Nice work, bud. I see how pro you are now. You got that hanging from your pants. Yeah. What was, was your better idea? You did have a better idea. I was gonna throw this off the moment. No, about the button. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant about this. Um, yeah, I was saying in high wind zones, you could actually use button caps. Yeah, and that is a good idea. To do these. And I just didn't realize how long it was going to be. Here. Yeah, and also I was thinking we could just take some scrap pieces of wood and just screw them on top of uh, the windows and stuff like that. Yeah, I think those are all great ideas now. Yeah. That we put it on Or we times. should just <laughs> not even put it on. It would probably be the best idea. You got that? <laughs> Freaking thing's big. <laughs> I think you got it upside down too. Yeah, spin one time. Just spin one time. There you go. Up here. All right, that'll work. Yeah, set it on Jono's lunch. 
We got our delivery here and a little pro tip is that we like to look at what we got on the delivery and try to stack the items in the order we need to use them, like what we need first on top. And if you don't do that, you end up having to unstack all the stuff by hand. So that's, that's a good pro tip. We've got our pre-painted soffit material here, Corey Gray Expert Finish LP Smart Sides, the same color as the corner boards and the fascia boards. And we've also got this vented, but since we changed our plan and made our soffits bigger, we're gonna have to kind of do this in two pieces, but I'm okay with that. Uh, we'll make it work just fine. Man, I can't help but notice it's got that new soffit smell. <sighs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> It's time for us to start installing the soffit material. We're going to start on the gable end here because why? Uh, we're going to let that material run down past on the flat side. Well, yes, and also we already had scaffold set here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's We already reason. had it set up. It's a half a day's work, I think, to get the scaffold in position. What we're doing is putting strips, we'll call them furring strips, to bring down the 2x6 frame down to the level of two by eight fascia. That's right. And in Sub case you fascia. missed it, that's because we kind of changed the plan on these and made them deeper than we originally planned. And that's why we're having to firm down. Not that my opinion matters to everyone, but in my opinion, these LP smart side soffit panels are really easy to install and they look great when they are installed. They're some of the only panels that I know of that you can get in a 16 foot length that are perfectly straight and lightweight. For those reasons, I think they're a great option to use and that's why I like to use them. On the business side of things here, we are super glad to be back at work after trying to outweigh this window delay. It didn't work out for us. And the reason we didn't just go start our next foundation is because the septic approval isn't done yet on that property. So we can't pull a permit on that property yet. We couldn't start it. So we did spend a lot of our time helping one of our friends and fellow YouTubers, Johnny Brook, remodel his 50 year old workshop. And that was a great way that we could get in and make some money and make some videos without having to take on a whole nother project that we would then have to completely finish before getting back to this one. So special thanks to Johnny Brook for hiring us, keeping us busy, and make sure to check out some of that action on his channel, Crafted Workshop. It was a really cool project and we're gonna keep working on it here and there as we go on. See, I usually try to put it in the gap, not so much on the wall. <laughs> now the wall's good. Yeah, you are freaking comedians, you know that? <laughs> if anybody's wondering why we like to get the siding finished before the shingles are put on, this is a great example. We have to stand up ladders up here and we screw down these little safety boards to keep the bottom of the ladder from kicking out and sliding down the roof. Imagine if the shingles were on already, how, how would we do this? Time lapse set up here <laughs> and it's been really windy so uh, hopefully this isn't destroyed. Still works, sweet. Lots of people have asked me if filming what we do takes extra time as far as our progress and it really does. We have to set up camera angles for everything we're doing. We try to explain what we're doing and sometimes our cameras blow off the mountain. We do enjoy doing it but it does take lots of time. We're checking out this vented soffit now. I'd love to see the saw that they cut the vents with. It looks like 10 slots, and I bet they have a saw with 10 blades all racked up in a big Ooh, gang that would be fun. cutter, and it probably just goes <laughs> and then moves down and you know feeds the board through. It'd be fun to watch. Let's take a short break for a word from our sponsor of today's video, Sunday Lawn Care. Everybody's got that guy in their neighborhood that has the amazing lawn, way better than yours. For me, that's neighbor Bradley down the hill. What's up, Bradley? Oh. You working on your yard? A little bit, yeah. That's cool. What have you been doing to yours? Oh, nothing. Nothing much. I started to say that's what it looks like, but I felt like I needed to ask. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably out there right now working on it. What he doesn't know is I'm working on mine. This year, I'm coming for you, Bradley. There is one small problem for me, at least, and that's that I don't know anything about growing grass or making it look green or full or nice. I'm just good at cutting it. So in order to compete with him, I went on to getsunday.com, 
and they figured out how to do it for me so that all I have to do is just follow the simple directions. They even mapped out how much of the stuff I would need based on my property from aerial shots. They can tell how much grass you have somehow. And I've got the stuff. I'm gonna start now. I'll show you how to do it. According to my quick start guide, my first step was to do spot treatment on weeds, which I have plenty of in my yard. Next, I got the old spreader working. It was completely seized up because I never use it. And I used the included seed to overseed my lawn in the bare areas, especially I hit it hard. Next, it was time to fertilize using these nutrient pouches and the included garden hose attachment. And I love that these pouches have simple, friendly ingredients that you can actually pronounce. And just FYI, Sunday Lawn Care also has live plants and trees, garden and pest control products that can be shipped straight to your door. For a healthier and better looking lawn this summer, head to GetSunday.com slash Perkins20 and get 20% off your first order. Thanks again to Sunday Lawn Care for sponsoring our video and let's get back to work. Felt like that was a good day for a half day's work. It's the first real day of work in three weeks. I know. I think we'll finish tomorrow. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, for real. Mm. All right, let's go home. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, time to start 10, 10, 30. The next morning started out like many other mornings, me in my driveway trying to get one more thing loaded in my truck that would not fit without moving other things around. I ended up having to move everything around to get this firebox loaded before I could get down the road. going to get started here by installing this firebox, but <laughs> the firebox that I wanted to order, I couldn't get it because of COVID and I didn't know that. So we framed for a firebox that I could not get anymore. So I had to buy a different one, which has different specifications. So now all we can do is reframe this chase for what will work for this one. So we're going to get going with that and see what we have to do. Hmm. Looks like that isn't about three pieces. It's supposed to be one. So this is real life here, folks. We're unpackaging some of the stuff that we ordered from eFireplace store, and obviously we're gonna have to file a warranty claim, and I don't think the homeowner's gonna be okay with that. We need a Rick Mason. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, we also had a broken thing on the firebox, too. I mean. Come on, people. Oh, it's man. America, do your job. That's the rest of it. Ah, uh, <sighs> so frustrating, man. Maybe we should start building fireplace inserts in the shop. <laughs> checking out the specs for our firebox that we did get and like I said I kind of learned my lesson on that these days maybe I should have checked <laughs> the availability before I based my framing on something that wasn't sitting here but we really lucked out what we need is 72 inches across the front right here and so that means if we fur this out three quarters of an inch we'll hit our number and we happen to have some three quarter inch tongue and groove sitting right out there so we're, all we're gonna have to do is just put this tongue and groove on and then put the firebox flange in and we have escaped having to reframe this whole thing miraculously. So while we lucked out with the depth of our new firebox being very similar to the one I thought I was gonna get, the height of the new one was quite a bit taller, so we had to remove the old header and put it on top of the OSB layer. And luckily this is not a load bearing wall, so we can just do a double flat two by four header just like we had before. New header, Let's go 47-ish is fine. After installing the first layer of the new header, we realized that there was not enough room to install the second layer below the studs. So we had to cut them a little more. We needed exactly an inch and a half above the first layer. So I broke out one of the previous pro tips of using the saw base as a guide, which is exactly offset by one and a half inches to the saw blade, giving us exactly enough room to slide that second layer of the header in. super cinematic here. <laughs> so we're cutting these pieces of paneling and I'm cutting a beveled side because we're putting it on a 45 degree wall to another wall. And a lot of times I think a pro tip is it's easier to cut the bevel cut 
first because I can just use my square and I don't have to try to align anything, but measuring from that to get my square cut. Sometimes hooking on this bevel cut's kind of a pain and you have to spend a lot of time aligning it. So another pro tip is that I just usually get my number here like this. I'm going for 14 and 5 eighths right there. I can visually sight that easy. And then I just use the end of my tape over here to just do that and that gives me my mark. And I can usually do that a lot faster than any other way. So though, that's a pro tip. You can scribe your measurement with the end of your tape. Nice. Did someone ask you to build their house? Yeah. You might want to check wow. out our work. That's big time. Yeah. I told them we'll do it. Um, price plus material plus a lot of money. <laughs> that's a good deal. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's going on here, but I know that the mantle is going to go here. Right. And then the TV is going to go here. Yeah, that's gonna be up there. It's got, it better be a big TV. Yeah. So I think we might want to do a little bit more blocking in here. <laughs> yeah. Just because it's say, not, yeah. you know, maybe another one of these at least. And also from here up, it's gonna be a different kind of finished material. It's gonna be stone going over top of this. Yeah. Or evolved stone. And then we'll have to fur the rest of this out with something else later. Boots with the fur. And then we may do like shiplap or something. Ooh. On up, I don't know what. Yeah, that look good. People love shiplap. Oh, they sure do. This looks good right here. I think it's yeah. good right there. <laughs> That's a nice look. We're expecting this house to be pretty tight, as in there's not much air leakage when we're done. So we're adding a fresh air intake to this firebox, which is basically a damper that you can open or close and it'll pull fresh air through a little piece of pipe in the firebox so you're combusting outside air not your inside air and uh, this is an add-on to this firebox and we're just gonna see if we can get it put on following the instructions get the rustiest nippers ever you could probably figure it out by watching our video for just a minute longer but this is a vent free fireplace meaning there's no chimney to the outside it just vents to the inside and has gas logs that are specially designed to burn very clean to allow that The reason the homeowners went with this type of firebox is that they're gonna use it for emergency heat, meaning heat when they don't have power, which does happen up on the mountain. The vented types have a glass covering, and so most of the heat goes out the chimney unless you're using a blower, which requires power. Closed, open, closed, okay. Like that, so that way is open. In is open, Things towards open. the front is closed. We gotta remember that well, in case the homeowners people, ask. Well, they can watch a video and they'll know. Yeah, that's a good thing to have a video about. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you got it. Oh, nice. <laughs> he hit play with his nose. <laughs> so we're pulling the craft paper off the insulation we're putting back here for the reason of it's more flammable than the insulation, like a lot more. Even though we're allowed to have combustible material right where this paper would be, I just think it's a good idea. And we're going to do a little demonstration of the craft paper, which I don't want to burn the house down, but basically craft paper, flammable. Put that out real good. Insulation. Not flammable. You can kind of melt it, but it won't ever catch on fire. Mm. So that's the reason we're pulling that craft paper off. <laughs> Bless you, it, wow. It makes and, you sneeze though. Yeah, and we're gonna do some little strips of something to help just retain that stuff. Uh, in places where we can have combustible material behind the firebox so that it doesn't just fall out of there onto the firebox later, even though combustible material is actually allowed to touch the back of this firebox, believe it or not, just not the top. And the clearance on the top is only three quarters of an inch to combustible. Wow. So we're just trying to play it safe. Yeah, I have a, I put one of these heat, not this kind, but I put a propane heater in my basement. Yeah. And dude, you can put stuff right on top of it. The DVD player stuff right on top of it and it doesn't even get hot. It's crazy. Are you joking me? No, I'm not at all. Oh, really? Yes, the kids go down there, put their PlayStation on it. It doesn't even get see, hot. I can't see your face behind the camera. I can't tell if you're I'm joking. I'm being serious. Okay. Thanks for doing that insulation, man. <laughs> you're lucky I like you. Hey, this is neighbor Jesse. And I, are you trying to like one-up us with the sawdust level here? Yeah, man. I mean... <laughs> I've never hey, seen well, any guy, buddy, that's no, sawdust. I work, I don't video, so <laughs> that's 
That's what I do. I see. <laughs> so you work harder, we work smarter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so our intake kit did not come with any four inch pipe or any hose clamps. So we thought we were gonna have to run to town, which is about an hour round trip. But first we decided to just look around the house and we actually came up with everything we needed. Thanks to the heat and air guys, they left some stuff laying around. So if you owe you guys a little bit of money, let me know, we borrowed some stuff. Hey, by the way, this is our outside shroud or termination. I was just marking with one of these ones for a fart fan. That's the real deal there. Will you get this um, to Jason's hand there and we're gonna move that fire. He's got his hand inspector right there. Is he? He's right there. See his hand? What is he, shrink? <laughs> If the plumber has to pull it out for some reason, we'll just have to take this outside shroud off because now it won't have enough length to, uh, you know, somebody will have to really work hard to get it put back in. So here's how the outside termination is going to look. We've got our uh, J block and basically I'm going to mount this shroud to that. And I'm just going to wait till we have the siding stuff out though. We don't have the coil nail nailer hooked up or anything. So we'll just leave that here. And also just in case for whatever reason, the guy that's doing the gas lines need to take the firebox out and put it back in. This isn't all connected and have to be undone. So we're going to call it there for today. I'm just going to leave this stuff right here. So we know where it is, right? You know where it is? Uh, it's right there. Yeah. Okay, where'd you we'll put that stuff? <laughs> oh, it's right there. Okay. <laughs> What's this? We can always come back to the video if we... Uh, uh, we already we mentioned that, having the video... You know, I want to say having the videos has saved me a lot of times when I couldn't remember something that I like wrote down on the job site somewhere. And I'm like, I wonder if I panned over where I wrote something on the wall, like a phone number or like some measurement. And sure enough, like several times, I've been able to scroll through videos, find it, zoom in, and not have to drive out here. Genius. Genius. Or like framing stuff in the walls, like where wires are, where pipes are. Look at the video footage. You'll see where it is. No. Where'd it go? I'm moving it inside. You're moving it inside? Moving it well, we didn't I'm film that part. Right. I put the heat and air guy stuff back where it was, so. That wasn't me if it's disappeared. Let's roll out. I got to go to a track meet. Track meet? Not for me. No. Sun's running. Uh, first track meet ever, the 800 and the 1600. Here, both in the same day, so I'm gonna have to probably carry him back to the truck. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's gonna be crippled. Yeah, but it should be good. Thanks for checking out our video today. We'll see you on the next one. We're down here at Jesse's, and he was all sawdusty a minute ago. I wanted to show you why he was. He's carving stuff with a chainsaw, and I've got a few shots here of what he starts with a big log and then kind of working into the project. The one you did last time was like this eagle though. I wish I had that on the it camera. It was actually a hummingbird. What? Yes. <laughs> All Similar, right. it may have looked like an eagle to start with. Okay. As these big logs look yeah. like, you know, a big um, log until oh, I will. So I yeah. think it's amazing that you can do that with a chainsaw man. So I just wanted to show everybody why you're so dusty. Lake and Savannah. I've always wanted to do that.